Sarve Bhyo Namaha. It is our great pleasure, pride and privilege to invite into our midst Dr. Sibichan K. Matthew, who has been kind enough over the years to accept our invitation unfailingly. Every single time we extend our invitation to him. So at the outset, on behalf of all our listeners who are participating here physically and to numerous other friends who are joining online, I extend a very warm welcome to Dr. Sebichan K. Matthew. And uh, I must share with you a very happy fact that every time that we invite Dr. Sebichan into our midst, he comes with a new feather in his cap. And this time around, he has taken charge as the Principal Commissioner of Income Tax, Chennai. And uh, he has earned laurels and plaudits of being a very efficient officer. And uh, he has served the cause of income tax at various capacities in the country. So the country is proud of you, sir. And uh, on behalf of all the citizens, I must thank you wholeheartedly. A few words about Dr. Sibichan. Of course, many people who have been participating here frequently know him very well. He has earlier served as the advisor of the Telecom Regulatory Authority of India for four years. He was in charge of Karnataka, Maharashtra, Goa, and Kerala. And uh, throughout his education, he has been a trendsetter and a record holder. He held the first rank in post-graduation from the University of Kerala. He earned his MPhil from JNU New Delhi, PhD in Fiscal Psychology, and uh, he did his post-graduation in Public Policy and Management from IIM Bengaluru. He also has a degree in LLB. He was the college topper and university rank holder. He has been the recipient of several prestigious fellowships from UGC, IC, SSR, and such like uh, prestigious institutions of the country. He has also been the recipient of several gold medals from the University of Kerala, National Academy of Direct Taxes and National Police Academy. He also happens to be the author of several best-selling books. In fact, just today we were fortunate enough to receive copies from Sir for our library. He is author not just in his chosen field, that is income tax and its attended subjects, but also an author of his own right in his mother tongue that is Malayalam. So it is very heartening to see, sir, that you have uh, represented in you such a hard blend of pravritti and vritti. When the boss is wrong, making people play pay, you just got cheated. And a Malayalam novel, a collection of short stories in Malayalam and several such works. So he is, as is evident, a person of many talents and it is very... Uh, happy for us to lend our ears to him and this time around he has chosen to talk to us about the subject the role and predicament of man in a machine ruled world a couple of words about the topic as well now the divide between what is known as the science and humanities broadly has existed ever since the western society went into the scientific revolution since the renaissance so to say and uh, C.P. Snow famously called it the two cultures in his address. So this, as and when humanities and science progresses, the subjects throw up newer and newer challenges for human beings to solve. And it is the predicament of us today in the 21st century to find efficient and sustainable solutions to problems such as artificial intelligence, how to harness those technologies for our betterment and at the same time be wary of the existential risk that such technologies are bound to engender and uh, who better to talk to us about these important and seminal issues than Dr. Sibichan Matthew who has a close understanding of the subject at the realm of theory and also practice. So on this note I request Dr. Sibichan to please begin his deliberations. Good evening, friends. Where it is rain or sunshine, in uh, Gokhale Institute, we will start on time. I'm so happy to see. Um, I mean, most of the faces are very familiar to me here. 
and uh, sir you are sitting in the same chair i think always, always. <laughs> thank you so much for coming and uh, thank you for the generous introduction and also introducing the topic and you you well presented about the topic also and um, this topic is chosen just as a brainstorming session along with you because it's some, this is something which is new something which all of us are very curious because we are in a state where many things are not in our control of course life itself is not in our control no doubt about that but certain things which we think are created by human are also after some time behaving or going to behave without any what i call control or without any sort of predictability that is the era in which we are living now we are going to live in the coming years the other day you might have heard of ai and chat gpt and all the other day we have we had a retirement function in our office normally people retire during the course of the month and we'll have the retirement function at the in the last day of the month you know last working day of the month so four or five officers were retiring on that day staff members and officers were retiring on that day and one by one people after others speaking about the officers the concerned retiring officials they will come and speak a few words so one by one officers were speaking and finally the last gentleman was an income tax officer he came he said i am not a good speaker and uh, i have we, you all heard very good speeches so far i do not know how good i will be in speaking i was sitting there i just uh, searched chat gpt and i wrote there just 5 minutes ago i am an income tax officer i have completed 32 years in income tax department i am retiring today please give me one retirement speech he came and he read out the retirement speech given by chat gpt i will tell you without any exaggeration not an exaggeration at all that was the best speech on that day that was not a generic speech it was talking about income tax department it was talking about what are the duties and responsibilities you had done as an inspector and then promoter as officer and uh, it also thanks specifically to the senior officers public the taxpayers and the government very systematic what a wonder it is other day other day one one of my uh, I, i got the uh, you might have read it in the news also later someone who i also know that person had given one audio sort of message in whatsapp he is from kerala he said one of my close friends he sent me a whatsapp message and he asked for money he said i am on transit in dubai airport my close relative is admitted to hospital for surgery in uh, mumbai i need an urgently 25000 baht or rupees can you please transfer this only for a day or two i'll come back and then i will transfer the money i'm unable to transfer since i am in uh, on transit in the airport it came from the whatsapp you know number of the his friend after about 5 minutes he received a whatsapp call audio call same the friend is speaking you know i just now sent a message to you did you see the message 
I wanted money, 25,000 rupees. Then he thought, okay, then I'll let me arrange that. So my friend is speaking. I know his voice. After about half an hour, he was also trying whether I should um, transfer from which account, how to do it. Then after half an hour again, video call. Hmm? WhatsApp video call. Who is speaking? It's that friend is speaking. That friend is speaking. Now you might have, uh, have you transferred? If you not, please transfer immediately. You know, close the video call. Same person on the video. Will anybody suspect? That person immediately transferred 25,000. Again, one more audio call came from, no, I need another 20,000. Then he got suspicious. So same person, video, everything is there. Then he found out relative of that friend, another person called up and got the got a contact of the no, his friend and he said, hey, where, where? I, did, I did not call you at all. I'm here only. I have not gone to Dubai or something. I have not even called. Please understand how dangerous it is. Through artificial intelligence, through tools, they have recorded some other video of you or that person. Their voice was put, lip move movement was shown correctly. How, see how frauds are happening. On the one side, there are a lot of positive things. On the other side, we cannot trust anything. So how serious such technology can be unless and until we are guarded. Now the question is whether we will be able to guard it at all. So, will human be a prisoner of machine? Frankly speaking, sometimes I feel very happy when things are happening online so fast. Our searches, Google searches are happening, we get very good results. Our online services are doing very well. Auto-complete options, everything which really guide us in our decision making. Life is so good, so cool. Think about even our GPS, no? We don't require to know the route of any place. Just put GPS, we can go anywhere. All our food delivery, grocery delivery, everything, a lot of the good things happening. At the same time, I'm also worried many times I feel, like, of course, I will not have, we, uh, we, we have our lifetime is anyway short-lived. We don't have to worry too much, but still we feel whether we can cope up with this technological transition. We worry about our own senior citizens, parents. We ourselves are, cannot cope up with many things, no? Technology engulfing, overtaking, controlling, in a very dominating manner, the lives of people. So many times we lose the freedom to talk, freedom to listen, freedom to walk, and freedom to rest. Anything what we do, it is captured. It is captured. Because for security reasons, we need to capture the lives of people. Privacy is compromised many times. So we feel many times that we don't have privacy. No? This is something which we cannot avoid, but something which is very dangerous too. They say average American touches the phone 2,600 times per day. And the time spent by average Indian on mobiles in 2020 had stood at 4.5 hours per day. Average Indian. It might have gone up now. This is 2020 statistics. Everything is in our smartphone, no? Everything is in our smartphone. 
and smartphone contains as many applications are there so many applications and most of these applications we give that agree please agree to use camera agree to use calendar agree to use whatever telephone uh, contacts so otherwise you cannot use that app so you need to use that mobile phone smart device for a purpose at the same time we are also liable for our data leak so wherever we go we have the smartphone using that we give our data right many times in shop even small shop also they ask for your mobile number of course recently one court has said the ministry has said, not court central ministry has said that they cannot insist on your phone number but when you go to a shop they will say you give the phone the your number mobile number we ask for the bill sometimes the bill also they won't give they say bill will come only to your mobile phone so number will necessarily they will take our number and if you apply for a small loan somewhere with one bank next day next two three days we can get about 10 bank people calling you for you do you require a bank loan hmm? so data is being shared unethically so there is something called social engineering which is happening you know what is social engineering it is scientific use of psychological strategies to gain access to personal data you go to hospital your doctor will be asking so many questions before your doctor ask ask these questions there will be somebody you know in many big hospitals there will be a junior doctor will be asking so many question filling up so many things then doctor then the dietitian the questions which they ask we you know this is unrelated why do they want record all these the questions are not oral they are recording everything unrelated things which is not necessary for the current this thing but they will ask so like in many places application forms for various services so many columns and rows they will be asking so many things so many sort of data are being collected so data is generated every time whenever you use the internet all of you know that data is being captured by the websites through cookies even if there is a cookie policy only only essential things should be stored but still that essential also determined by them not us so wherever you go in internet whatever you do in the internet and if you use a public wifi and use your bank account or any other sensitive data these are all not confidential at all we please you have to understand that there is no confidentiality in that so everything which we do in the internet it is it is it is it is anything can be taken by people hacked by people extracted by people so we should be, that, then we will feel that same first slide which i said how we lost our freedom we lost our privacy or not because we are getting lot of comforts in the internet era because this data all controlled by big corporates large organizations and they why the facebook and all these um, social media platforms are free you no know? one is their advertisement and advertisements are very limited they take the data sell the data data is the new oil no oil was a costly thing for between the countries now data the information information is a most valuable asset for any establishment any organization any government information is the most important thing so that's why i say all critical infrastructure are under extreme risk of collapse 
at the as the global information grid that controls them are at risk of crash or hacks if you see in that in the slide if you see that every big company they face the threat of hacking you have established a company or organization for many years with the so much of resources thousands of employees but one employee sitting in one corner of the world he can hack into the most complex system so a study by deloitte says 90% of passwords can be cracked former fbi director robert muller said there are only two types of companies in the world one is those can be hacked and those that will be hacked alan turing a mathematician computer scientist with a philosophy background posed in 1950 a question can machine think and he said a machine can be taught like a child the scientists were knowing it in 1997 a supercomputer beat world chess champion gary kasparov in a tournament john mccarthy he is the person who coined the term artificial intelligence you know when as early as many many decades ago and one important thing he says and he and he in 2001 he wrote a short story i went through that short story is only three or four pages that short story he wrote in 2001 and the short story set in 2055 as if it is happening in 2055 what he tells in that short story there is a house where mother is an alcoholic and there is a child a baby born it's only about 18 months the baby has to be taken care of so in 2055 so somebody raised this issue that how that child can be brought up by an alcoholic mother the government should do something now if you do now we have child care homes and all right now no is there is an issue then they will be taken to a child care home the parents are not taking looking after the children all those happens now so in 2055 he says government will send a child care robot to look after the child so the story says that government is sending a child care robot specialized in that the robot started looking after the child and robot is you no know, uh, telling no uh, he is experiencing robot is experiencing the behavior of the how the mother mother is ill treating the child the how the child's life is affected and how the robot is getting, you know feeling pain seeing such things so what that story though it's fictional story what it says there is a stage where even machines will also start not only really thinking but also they can express the emotions i don't know whether we can believe that now but the way things are going it can happen that way so what is ai simple definition ai refers to the this uh, sentence is from uh, try document on ai they say ai refers to the ability of machines to perform tasks that would normally require human intelligence such as learning problem solving and decision making so i am taking this session in a very very simple way whether this topic is actually very complex topic should be um, explained by computer scientists like her they should uh, explain this i am making it in a very simple way to the for each one of us who are layman to understand what is ai refers to the ability of machines to perform tasks tasks that would normally require human intelligence 
such as learning problem solving decision making so who who used to do all these things when in the during the computer internet era, um, computer era only human no we have to switch on we have to prepare the program we will prepare a software so decision making is by us problem solving is by us actually no computer used to do the analysis part they do the analysis so uh, so neeti ayog's definition AI is a constellation of technologies that enables machines to act with a higher levels of intelligence and next line very important and emulate the human capabilities of sense comprehend and act almost they will be thinking like a human no now this ai is used in various sectors they started using in various sectors in all these places they started using artificial intelligence to make the life of people easy by 2050 one in six people in the world will be over the age of 65 what ai contributing for senior citizens most important thing is a wearable device there is a wearable device which can completely monitor our health status our bp our sugar our cardiac problems everything can be checked and give a, give us a warning signal wonderful thing early warning system for potential health issues allowing for prompt interventions and reducing the risk of adverse events we like get a heart attack it will predict am i going on a wrong tra track everything will be predicted and give us guidance medic they will remind us for medications what to take which medicine to take when to take the reminders will be coming and there will be even self driving cars you don't have to drive so good for senior citizen good for people this is a movie malayalam movie android kunyapen that is a movie name malayalam movie it must be in amazon prime and other netflix or something this android kunyapen this story is like this <coughs> he his wife died he felt very lonely he has only one son he is settled abroad uh, he is he cannot come because he is working his wife is a, um, uh, also there only Yes, he he married a Japanese or Chinese. I don't I remember. So they're settled there, and father is alone here. So son is so unhappy and sad that father is alone, living lo in a lonely life. And they were into robotics and all in that company. So they said, my wife suggested, okay, let us give. We have a robot which we are trying to develop. We also need to do some trial run. to understand or you know uh, to have as a pretest to how it is working what are the improvements to be done on the machine that day that, that way instead of giving it to a lab or something let us pack it and uh, take it to our house this time when you go to india we will give it to him and after some time we can take it back you know we will be two months two three months it can be there and we can also understand because from there itself signals will come so whatever is happening here they can see wherever they are so they programmed everything including cooking including serving giving tablets everything to take care of the dad this father was very furious he was very angry the robot will come and stand nearby and all no he was very angry i don't want i don't want the, him to be him, him to serve me food i'll cook myself i will do everything myself i don't want any robot but after 2 3 weeks one one month two months gone he became so attached to the robot so emotionally attached 
morning he gets up he wants to see the robot near near him he cannot live without the robot but this is the company md called up ceo called up and told the, uh, the his son boy no get back we need it back it's only been sent for uh, testing purpose and what sort of emotional you know uh, issues father faced at that point of time when the robot was taken away from that dad how machines going to play such a strong intimate role in human this is going to be this is a reality this is going to happen the world's leading futurist ray kurzweil says we are just a few scientific breakthroughs away from achieving eternal life are i don't know we can that we can believe or not this is what he said i am just putting that in the slide is a futurist it seems he says we are almost close to eternal life that means there is no death of 90 95 100 there is no death like that we can prolong even the death stephen hawking what he said about artificial intelligence a super intelligent ai will be extremely good at accomplishing its goals and if those goals are not aligned with ours we are in trouble we are in trouble machine can do many things but is it if if it is not aligned with our goals purpose of our life then we are in trouble therefore to create thinking machines could spell the end of him as a race in an interview to bbc he said machines will redesign by itself and humans who are limited by slow biological evolution can compete and they will get superseded by machines very dangerous i am not scaring you i am only quoting what he has said stephen hawking has said is a scientist all of you know that he feels the speed in which our thinking happens in a there's a, there's a speed no but the, he says the machine speed is much more than what we visualize professor harari said we should be very worried because what we need to understand about artificial intelligence it is the first tool that can make decisions by itself all this is very important all previous inventions in human history always empowered us they always gave us more power because the decisions were always made by humans if we inf- invent a knife the knife cannot decide whether to use it to cut salad or to murder somebody or to save their life in surgery only we decide no if you invent an atom bomb similarly the atom bomb cannot decide who to attack when and where it is like that but in artificial intelligence ai is the first technology that can actually take make decisions by itself that is the challenge that is the danger whatever we discovered whatever we done whatever is invented all technologies empowered us but ultimately the decision how to use it and when to use it and where to use it decided by us here they say in ai decision making is not ours machine takes decisions differing view he says rollo carpenter he says we can't predict what will happen when machine overtakes us 
He's very optimistic, he says. No, no, people say like that, but we can't predict. Second, Rodney A. Brooks, he says, we are grossly overestimating the real capabilities of machines. It won't happen that much immediately. We are overestimating. Some consolation for us, some relief for us, some viewpoints like that. Now, will we become jobless? No, that is very important. We need to survive. Our young people need to survive. Elon Musk says in a YouTube video, if AI becomes smarter than a person, what do we do and what jobs will we have? If AI can do everything, why? Why, we recruit, why do we need to recruit so many people giving TA, DA, all those things, pension? No? Yes. In the recently published report, Future of Jobs by World Economic Forum, by two, but says that by 2025, machines projected to overtake humans in workplace task hours in 12 key industry sectors. They identified certain sectors. They say their machines will overtake human beings. It is one of the few that is genuinely an extinction risk if it, is, if it were to go bad. He says, we are uncertain about our future and such an uncertainty is not a good sign. Now, there are companies that attempt to use AI to replicate the neocortex of human brain. And many companies are investing in research on that. Now, if AI does all these things, from where AI does all those things? We cannot say that machine has brought some data from somewhere, some from the Mars or somewhere. No. Machine gets data from us. Machine takes decision. That is the message we found right now. Correct? Message. Machine takes decisions. But machine takes the decision based on data fed. And there... That is the area where you, we can have a little control. What is the threat? If the decision of the machine can go wrong, the data quality is not correct, data is biased, and all security and privacy rules are breached, then we can see the result of AI can be unethical. And people can really do that. If they want to take a decision which they want, they will take the data which they want, manipulate that data and give a decision. This is what it is. So all the tables and figures and statistics can be manipulated easily by those who have control over the data. Now, that definition you should know yourself. Who is having control over the data? Could be corporate or large organizations or governments. If they are unethical, if they want to manipulate the data for their, what they want to achieve, they can do that. So as we saw it earlier, unlike the traditional engineering systems, designers cannot be sure how AI systems will behave. So new technologies are arming governments with unprecedented capabilities to monitor, track, and surveil individual people. In states with the track records of frequent human rights abuses, AI systems are likely to be used to increase human rights abuse. And they can spread 
false information so fast. They can create videos and within a second it reaches millions of people and people believe. And they in the video contain statistics and data, graphs. People think, yes, cracked. This is like that person in the beginning with the story which I said, a near incident which said, they saw the person on the video asking for money. And he believed, yes, this is my friend. Same thing will come in the, when, when the videos are shared, saying this is what is history. This is what is fact with the statistics and all. Who is, who, who is there to check the data, whether it is correct, how this data has been sourced, how the data has been analyzed, whether the data has been collected without any, without any bias. So what is the message? And what can we do in our roles? The first and foremost is our regulatory ecosystem. We need to have a robust regulatory system to control how the data is collected, how the data is processed, how the data is used, and for what purpose. G20 countries have taken the initiative. TRI has come with a paper, consultation paper, and TRI has suggested for an artificial intelligence and data authority of India to be established. The last month only that uh, they have come with this recommendation to the government that we need to establish one artificial intelligence and data authority of India. Niti Aayog released a two-part approach paper on principles of responsible AI. That means when the AI is irresponsible only, all these problems happen. We need to make AI responsible. We cannot do away with the AI. AI is required. AI is the future. But we have to ensure these principles. All these should be taken into consideration. India has organized Responsible AI for Social Empowerment in 2020 to drive India's vision and roadmap for social transformation, inclusion, and empowerment through Responsible AI. Yes, India needs AI. Our country needs AI, but Responsible AI. And India joined other leading countries as a, in a global partnership on artificial intelligence. But things are going faster. Technology is you know, expanding faster. So we need to work and prepare ourselves immediately. So digital personal data protection bill you might have read. This month, July, cabinet has approved digital personal data protection bill. It will be tabled in parliament, maybe this session itself. All the parliament session started last week. This will be tabled in parliament for debate. And this is what the principles which government is looking at to implement. Transparency. All AA related things should be transparent to the people. Lawful basis of processing. First is transparency, how data is collected, what data is collected. Lawful basis for processing. It should be processed only for legal purposes in a legal way. Purpose limitation. If it is, it is for a one purpose, data is collected, it should be used only for that purpose. Data minimization. Ask the data which is most important to, for that purpose. That's all. Don't ask so many things. For application form or anything which you fill up, what is required, only that should be asked. Proportionality. The harm, there should not be a harm created because of the data. What is used should be proportional to the uh, fulfillment of the objective, not more than that. Retention, how long you can keep the data, hospital data or whatever data you gather, how long you can keep that data. For example, you can see CCTV everywhere, everywhere CCTV is there. For security purposes, it is required. How long that personal data of people can be kept? Who can have access to those data? When it has to be destroyed? 
even even interception no we do the tapping telephone tapping for security purposes and all in case government or any authority authorized is tapping the uh, conversations it may be for a purpose to understand a terrorist when he is going to act what is he going to what is up to who are the accomplices but that person may be talking many things to many people for other you know part of his life so how long or how much can be you know tracked and uh, when it can be destroyed then accountability so digital personal data protection bill says these are the individual rights <clears throat> we should all be aware of it right of access to data on copies of data somebody has collected data from me i should be able to have access to see the data how it is used where it is used and any time i will be able to see the data right to rectification of errors so somebody collected data i found the data is wrong actually i should have the right to rectify that error so that the data wherever the server they will correct it right to restrict or object to processing right to withdraw consent or object to marketing this data cannot be used for any marketing purpose any time i can withdraw that so something you have posted on facebook facebook something is posted they say no once it's posted posted so i should be able to withdraw that any time i should be able to anything which i have done in social media i feel it is not to be there in any internet platforms i should be able to remove that photograph or whatever right protecting against solely automated decision making and profiling so sometimes right, this ai profile in an automated manner it can use the data for multiple purposes for multiple sources so i have a right to understand that and i should have a say in those decision makings right to complain to the relevant data protection authority this bill is bringing a data protection authority bill also mandatorily bring into every organization will have a data protection officer if you have any suspicion of anything that my data is used wrongly the data protection officer can be approached every organization should have mandatorily and authority can impose huge fines the now they are for big companies like you know big uh, google or uh, any facebook or linkedin or something they say, say this, it goes up to 250 crore and all the penalty which is proposed in the bill you know so at every stage there is a check on this this is what is proposed in the our bill which is going to be discussed in parliament a right to nominate this was very important my data is used and i cannot go and complain i am a senior citizen i don't know where to complain what to complain and all so i can nominate a person all my data in any information which is in public domain about me i authorize this person to any time go and approach delete erase or whatever legal action to be taken if it is misused i can i can nominate this is a very important provision in the bill what are the other things we can do ourselves give minimum data possible wherever we go and enter into any transaction any online transaction please ensure that we give the minimum data possible to that agency that organization notify the purpose the organization should notify tell you why this data is collected from you storage period should be specified how long they will keep this and when they will destroy it should be known to us declare that data will not be used for any other purpose other than the purpose in which on which it was notified to you and there should be well planned objectives they cannot say now the data is collected for this purpose after some time we are having another expansion of the company we are having some other uh, work for that we need this data minimal data access rather than complete data access this is what we always do you know when we uh, uh, install one application in your mobile phone 
It's just one line they will ask. Please agree whether you give uh, you know, approval for you know, messages, photos, videos, calendar, etc. App can you know, take it. App can have access to all these. One single sentence will come. These all are wrong. Now, most of the people, when we, when we install the apps, we just give, yes, agree, because otherwise it won't work. The custodian. Data is in the custody of identifiable, legally accessible, accountable party. So every company, every organization should have a custodian of data. Consent of the owner, right to access the data to know how it is used. This is also very, very important to protect the rights of people. Now what happened, I said in the earlier, you apply for a loan to one company, and the, they, will, they, will ex, they will share the data with others. All of it, they will call you and ask, do you want a loan? So there is a restriction that you approached a company for a service. They cannot you know, share the data with anybody else that this person is in, in need of this. So let us all try and call that person. All telemarketing calls are coming through this. And another thing is that, another restriction is that you, they cannot profile based on your caste or a gender or sexual orientation, health status, interest. They cannot classify the data. It's a very important thing. Otherwise, they will say, this community people are all like this. They'll come with a conclusion. Or women are like this. Based on some minimum data, they will come with con such conclusion. They say, no, such conclusion should not be our. This data should not be used for such statistical analysis. And in case you want to do, use it for some studies, anonymize the data. It should not be linked to a particular person. Anonymize the data and use it for your statistical purposes. Now, the, when the system is under maintenance or when amalgamation happens, merger of companies happen, machine is under repair, data has to be secured. Many times when it happens when the mobile phone is not working well, if you have to go to a mobile shop, you are scared. They'll say, you come after four hours. That four hours, he can take out all your photos, all your contact list, whatever data in your mobile, if the emails are there. It is very risky because we don't know many times how to you know, repair it. There's it is not, something is not working. We have necessarily go to a person. It was so simple so far. Now it is so dangerous that the government has come with such laws, rules, saying that we need to have some sort of control in all these things. So right of owner to rectify or delete data. Periodic risk assessment of data security and privacy. Every organization should have a periodic data security and privacy analysis assessment. Some sort of audit should be there. So information security audit has become mandatory now in government departments now. There should be information security audit by trained people. And there is also suggestion and provision for provision for fees and compensation. If there is a loss happens because of a data theft for us, that that company should compensate us. Data com uh, co combining, see, it's like that. See, we give certain data in hospital, certain data in some, in other, for, for some other, other authentication, or certain data for bank loan purpose. Certain data. So we know that anyway, I have given only this data here. There I have given only this data. But agencies can take all this data from multiple sources and profile you and give it and have a 360 degree profile of you. That also should not be done. This is what is happening now. No? No, even if our own investigations, government tax investigations, we do that for a purpose. Uh, the purpose is not unethical because we have to see how people you know, invest and they are, whether they are evading taxes and all. So we do the 360 profiling. So you bought a jewelry from this shop, you put a deposit in another bank, then you had a, in a public provident fund account somewhere, then you sold a property somewhere, Rishar office, then you, you transacted in shares, so from the stock exchange, 
uh, and uh, no various investments various uh, your so that all will be profiled so that are legal things legally 360 degree profile is being taken of a person where all he has made investments where all he has made money so all this that is what we see in the returns you know when you file a return this return filing time you have that uh, yes you uh, know uh, and tas tax inf information summary and all this so there we can have everything even if you have forgotten they will tell you no there is some 100 200 rupees interest so my mother i asked my mother so this is a filing season you send me what are the things so she sent me rental income her pension uh, he said no i said interesting no interesting where interest no deposit at all she said so it came here i opened her her login id and i found see tanlakshmi bank 750 rupees kathrik sriam bank 2000 rupees state bank in this branch 2500 rupees here this total this match so it is all there in the system no whether we can whether we cannot hide that so certain for legal purpose do profiling but illegal purpose profiling that should not be there that is what it says acting upon a a results when machine makes a decision that's dangerous no make machine makes a decision based on the analysis of data can the party affected adversely raise a question or give clarification this is something which government needs to no uh, see in the in when the system authority comes into uh, comes to be enforced when entities rely on the decisions given by machines they have the responsibility to explain the logic behind the decision to those who are affected by decision now so what is the difference between this now machine is taking decision so we human should see the decision and understand how this machine has taken this decision on what data set what is the logic and the authority or the organization has a responsibility to tell the person we have taken this decision we are denied loan to you we have not give, refusing scholarship for your for your child or we are not giving you visa this is the reason some sort of logic should be there machine should not be um, left to the machine to decide the plight of human if the data is biased then it will not be a correct decision that is why we said in the beginning the principles data should be unbiased should be transparent all these things should be followed properly and data should be seen in context so see example why a customer defaulted on a due for clear deficiency of service so one person has taken something and he did not remit it because service was not there so he did not give back the money but that is taken as they take a branded him as a defaulter and all the loans rejected to this person saying that this person already defaulted but there is a reason for his default so such things should not happen wrong selection of data taking data that will contribute to the to prove a hypothesis and excluding the data that would disprove the hypothesis i want to penalize this group this particular community or this particular people and say that all these people are like this have you taken data from others also and compared to give a conclusion that only this particular group of people are doing this so that's what they say the wrong wrong collection of data that is why the if the, the authority has a lot of power they can manipulate the data and give conclusion saying that this is what you believe you have conducted the study we have conducted research this is what it is you believe it if data are extensively used to out of context people tend to give a different picture in social media and this will lead to wrong conclusions all of us know how the videos fake videos are being circulated in uh, you know in whatsapp and how many of us are believing it believing it earlier to write an article publish an article publish a book it goes through so much of revisions and editing and you know lot of a lot of uh, corrections by editors now anybody can write an article and put it in the now people come with such a new discoveries about history which is nothing that no nowhere related to whatever is in archives or our archival evidences so suddenly like one one person can say this is what it is 50 years back bangalore was like this bangalore had a king bangalore had did this he did that and he will tell uh, no um, uh, give a speech with so much of that data and figures and all people believe so that is the power of social media now 
the extensive, exclusive, uh, out of context data, data is taken out of context and circulated. So data protection authority, so these are the things which they are proposing to do, which all with penalties and prosecutions and everything, definitely uh, parliament will pass it and soon this authority will come. I think that will be to, to, to a greater extent. Whatever worries we are having that on data, sourcing, data processing will get addressed there. So what is the summary today? First, the risk may not be imminent, imminent, but is real. So, because some people are saying, no, it is our overestimation and all. But some of the scholars are saying that, no, it is dangerous. But it may not be happening today or tomorrow, but it is real. It is going to happen. That is the summary. So, AA can contribute to make our lives better. AA is prone to biases leading to incorrect conclusions. It can be used for mass destruction of used, if used or misused. AA can be programmed to kill people en masse remotely or assassinate specific persons. Machines and robots do not need humans, they just need internet. There may be some technological hype, but it is real. Aligning AI with the human goals is the challenge. Any misalignment is disastrous. This is what our country, our government is going to do, to align with our human goals. This is what uh, G20 uh, um, uh, countries are doing. This is what is done by all of the international agencies and other countries that aligning it with uh, our goals and should not go out of our control. So there is a need for ensuring responsible artificial intelligence. With this, I close. And what we require is intelligence with wisdom should be the future. You know? Don't give, leave everything to the machine. Humans should have a control over things. And AI should be used for limited purposes where it is not any way using, you know, do, have, do have, making any unethical decisions. We have to ensure that. So this could be our future. And uh, what us common people like us, what we can do is we need to understand the, our rights as a citizen when we give our information. So that most probably, and I am sure 100%, our data protection bill and all these things which is going to get passed, mostly this month or next month, will take care of that. Thank you. If any of us here has any questions, you can please, we're open to a couple of questions. Yes, please. Yeah, please, anyone, please uh, stand up and speak loudly and clearly, please, and make the question crisp, please. Sir, so, sir, a person in the front, you please ask first, please. Yeah, sure. No, no, whoever can go first. Sir, only simple question. Huh? I am a layman. What is your best advice? Yes, uh, very good question. <coughs> the question is, in this context, what should we do? Should we adjust with that or not? Do we have a choice? Actually, no choice. Actually, there is no choice. So when the computer came, some of us were, we were hating computers. Why computers? No? But computer has become part of our life. Internet came, we were surprised. Why did this internet bore the youngsters? But internet has taken our lives. Same way artificial intelligence also going to take over the technological transition and transformation which is happening in this world. What is the thing we can do is to understand our rights, how my data or my information is processed by any authority. This is a, these are the starting, you no know, fundamental or basic 
steps taken by government where we we have been promised by the government that they will protect our interests within those limitations we should also in our day to day transactions we should be able to understand that certain things which are coming as a very believable truths are not believable we started with that story that person video call came that person spoke he thought it is his friend it was not so we may have to be guarded that a person who is using my data can misuse it also so how we can be guarded how long we will be successful we do not know we may have to use our wisdom to understand so learn we may have to read a lot to understand what is happening this is what happened when i wrote my book you just got cheated understanding white collar crime i mentioned so much of cyber crime happening and in other countries and what i mentioned was the crimes travel to different countries is originate in somewhere somebody come with a crooked plan somewhere it all travels so if you open your eyes and ears to what is happening across the world we will be god yes i read it somewhere this could be that this could be a scam this could be a cheating so maybe an awareness level so governments have had the limitations we also should be guarded first point is regarding the tds frauds and any frauds which is happening in the system now any law any rule which you bring there are same way there are intelligent people who are working who can flout the rules you can see income tax act every year act is getting changed every year rule is getting changed why it is get, getting changed because based on the changes which is happening outside because of the loopholes or whatever which is happening we plug it now regarding uh, tds or any other fraud which is happening so tds happens t who is t who is who is uh, filing the tds statement tds statement is filed by the person or institution which is deducting the tds from us so they are supposed to deduct the tax from us and then file a statement to the authority that this much have been paid to this person out of the this much tds deducted and i have i am making the payment to government so many times what happened many uh, companies or many institutions they deduct tax then they do not pay to the government account you will not know that you will file the return saying that i got form 16 this is what is shown in my this thing and this much of tax deducted when you file return you claim those tds and the system matches it with the tds statement filed by the director director has not paid it 
so there are many people who um, uh, defraud the revenue by not remitting the tds to the government account and vanish so such cases are also there that way you may not get credit on credit for tds so otherwise refund frauds which are happening see this all happening in a, was happening in a large way earlier earlier used to wait for 2 years 3 years to get a refund now within few weeks the refund will come but when the return is filed within a, within minutes return is processed so there are chances where people still manipulate the claims or rebates or deduction which are to be claimed uh, now the government is in a path where government trusts the assessees earlier most of the cases would be take for scrutiny hearings will be conducted lot of things used to happen now government says we trust you that is why you file a return we will immediately process it so because of that trust reposed by government on taxpayers there are some unscrupulous fellows they will claim wrong deductions and wrong rebates wrong exemptions and all because earlier you know when the return is filed you have to file all those evidences all the proof now government is not asking any proof you claim it you claim this is a medical insurance you claim this that and all to take it to there are some people criminals who wants to take care of this we know that government is not asking more proof so claim everything there are some returns there are some uh, people who suggest tax payer you claim whatever deductions are available in the income tax act you claim it it will come but we have a strong risk assessment unit in income tax department so earlier you know if somebody any authority doesn't like they'll go and scrutinize your file now doesn't happen it's all computerized and based on the profile of the return itself so that's why ai also committed a picture there we understand okay this person uh, cannot have this claimed this much of claims these are wrong claims take this case for scrutiny so such things are happening uh, but the number of cases scrutinized is very less uh, government also didn't want to complicate the things so that is what is happening and the second question which you said about uh, though after the uh, not uh, banning and uh, no demonetization and all the things still uh, people are amassing wealth uh, in a illegal way that is correct it it is it is reduced uh, maybe to a larger extent but you all know that still people generate money so how people generate money you tell me you will be knowing black money uh, how Huh? Uh, but how, how that is after after you generate money you want to put it as a hawala and come back as white money but where is the black money generated yes property registration even now we cannot plug it 100% so um, uh, guideline value or whatever you register but you know the property is of high value so this property is worth uh, 1 crore but guideline value is only 35 lakhs why to pay so much of stamp duty so 35 lakhs only i will do 65 lakhs is black But, but pardon this is a property no yeah. huh. source, source. the other person source other person earn money how yeah. next question uh, other person how he earn money no. yes he had torn turn over 1 crore he showed turn over 20 lakhs 80 lakhs in a um, turn over is not accounted in the books of accounts that money generated over a period of time so that money i will use for unaccounted money unaccounted uh, no transaction for the property then what are other things how is money is generated in tax they are not good uh, same yes yes gst evasion and all those things they want to give bill they will uh, remove so we have some done some searches <coughs> last year and we found a software has been used by this some of these uh, shops big large uh, retail chains so uh, just before the gst return firing yeah, 40 50% of the or bills already would be deleted from the system itself so we uh, raided even the software supplier we raided him we got the list of his fellows whom he has supplied we surveyed all those cases so and uh, found out and some big big companies big big retail i don't want to name it we found how they are evading tax and huge money was uh, you know tax demand was raised based on that in fact uh, our uh, teams are very very smart actually very very intelligent especially investigation teams even if they have deleted everything from the uh, so that's also another positive things about uh, cyber uh, no investigation that they have deleted everything from the mobile phone everything from the uh, hard disk 
but still through forensics we took back took back everything all the messages deleted all the emails deleted everything was taken back by our of our uh, team members and got everything back there are some searches when we go they all expecting searches these days no think though they will search because we are a big company and uh, they try to delete everything but our uh, team members are so good they will extract the data which is already deleted from the system also and uh, no we come back so computer actually cannot hide anything though we think that it is deleted deleted we can get it back Uh, no, no, I'm not sure about this. Uh, this particular case, uh, um, returns have. I, I, no, I, 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 I'm surprised to hear that it is not possible that returns are not filed. Returns would have been filed. So without that, they cannot continue. The year after year, they have to file return. But certain disclosures, they might not have filed a return. So certain mandatory disclosures are there in case they take some funding from uh, some cap venture VC funds from other uh, 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 enterprises or firms. Or this has to be disclosed. So they would have made partial disclosures. Maybe that could be the reason. Secondly, you know, ambitious. You know, see, we have uh, we, large funds, and you are very ambitious to expand the business. And during the course of which, things won't work well as we expect. And people lose money. And uh, these are OPM. What is OPM? Other people's money. You know, people, are, people don't care about it. Because I'm the CEO, I'm the MD, I'm the board of directors. We get our share, we get our salary, we get everything. But these shareholders are, you are, we, are, we all of us share, uh, take shares, 1,000 rupees, 10,000 rupees. So, and they use that money. So this is what is happening in uh, most of the public uh, companies where shares are taken by investors and we do not know where they are investing. So that could be reason. I would suggest to see, if, since everything is digital now, you don't take much space, uh, at least 10 years you should keep it. Because what happens, see, there are different uh, slabs, like, you know, if, the, if, if we find there's an escapement of income, there are certain slabs. Up to this, many, this much of amount, three years we can reopen. There's something beyond that. Something goes up to 10 years. So it is always better in electronic format, if you keep your evidences, it is always good. And something we have, something called Black Money Act, which have been introduced a few years ago, which there is no time limit. So it is always better to keep our, uh, in a soft copy, we have Digi Locker by Government of India. So many things are there. Try to keep everything uh, in our possession, if possible. Even I don't know that it is. I, mean, I just I, that I saw the quotation. <laughs> That's a very good thing or bad thing? Very, very good thing. You said you want to live. <laughs> I don't want to live. I'm actually scared, actually. You know, the way technology is uh, transitioning, we'll be able to cope up with all these things. So, but what they're saying, maybe, I don't exaggerate it, he's a futurist. He says, we can prolong our uh, you know, uh, life, he says. 120 years, 150 years, 200 years, people can live with the AI-enabled uh, you know, health uh, preventive things if you, if you take care. That's what they say. 
so maybe it is an what they call a little exaggerated quote but there could be uh, prolonging the life okay. even now senior citizens number of uh, senior citizens are increasing now in, uh, in our country because of our uh, good health uh, initiatives which have been taken by you know uh, people and the uh, government no he is that but that is so he says not me uh, correct extending the life Hmm. Ah, <laughs> ah. not me he is he is saying not me yeah. i know that is what see that is the thing which i said in the beginning itself such talks uh, I, what did i say we have to open our eyes and ears and start reading things whatever is happening i understand that if i ask my if my my mother would not be knowing anything about artificial intelligence but she must be doing actually whatever whatever is ai uh, enabled services she, she must be availing that that is why our vernacular newspapers our magazines our uh, um, social media should be responsible responsibly share the information so government is trying the level best to make the websites of the government as simple as possible in multiple languages for people to understand now we have an aadhar came we were all worried what is this aadhar how it can be used now everyone knows about aadhar no if aadhar um, uh, whatever updation to be done how it has to be done uh, everything is known to people now so maybe government as well as the non government organizations as well as our media houses to should spread the awareness among different cross sections of society it is not that easy i understand that it is very difficult to you know catch up with the the way things are happening the th the way things are now the airport if you go also with that uh, this thing you no know, uh, we don't know where to put this to so that you get to get drop and up and we'll go inside now for for the check in luggage also they are saying that you no know, it's be automated you take the tag from there you go there won't be anybody in the airport to you know to check your boarding pass and all those things so we may have to slowly get into all these things and for that any as you said more awareness required simple way to present to different type of people people with different educational qualifications in their language explain to them and guide them that is required the people at the higher level should have an integrity at every level integrity is not only for the government and officers or bureaucrats or politicians but for every citizen integrity should be there for everyone <laughs> Thank you. Uh, I think one person who just may want to ask a question. Correct. Correct. Yes. 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 correct correct yes correct right right right
That's why the government is coming with this uh, Nidhi Aayog and all these plans and protections. Uh, no, 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 no. It's not only data protection. Or generally, about uh, uh, what what government attempts to do in the next few months or a few years. And if you see the last two, th two, three years, no government is government. And government departments are made more transparent. Every department should have a website, and they should say that what they are going to do, and uh, you know what is their projection of uh, uh, next few months or few years. These are all given. But as you said. Uh, they need to be more transparent in these things, not only on data protection aspect, generally on um, uh, other AI-related matters. What government is uh, you know, going to do, what organization is going to do, how they are going to process these things, you know, what, what is the impact uh, people are uh, going to have. This thing should be there. But I am sure we have the India has the best scientists, India has the best technology providers, India will be, you know, in fact leading other countries uh, shortly and uh, it's a matter of time, definitely. It is happening, oh, Right. Because we have a large population, no? Not unlike US, UK or any other advanced country, we have a large population. There is no other country which, which is like India, no? Very unique. We have large burden of population and yes, lot of priorities, lot of issues we, you know, with all these things, we are a superpower. That's a great thing. That's it. Uh, thank you, Dr. Sibichan, and thank you, everyone, for participating so lively, in a lively manner in the question and answer sessions. I must uh, take this opportunity to uh, thank Dr. Sibichan wholeheartedly. If I may mention an aside, when the first moon mission was launched, not by India, but by Apollo from the United States of America, the founder of our institution, Dr. D.V. Gundappa, wrote a rejoinder to that whole mission in the pages of Public Affairs, which happens to be the mouthpiece of the organization. He, while congratulating the institution for the remarkable feat, he asked a simple question. The ultimate objective was slated to be to, to check whether moon was inhabitable by human beings. He asked the question, are you going to make the same planet as inhabited by humans? Are you going to take the same human problems to another planet? So those are the kinds of questions that needs to be answered today as well. And Dr. Sibichan, to lay the rules of the uh, game to all of us, because most of us are unaware of what is happening around us. So it takes something for a person of his stature to come down to our levels and share his knowledge and information in a way that is accessible, digestible by everyone. So I think it would be very nice and uh, very gracious on our part to acknowledge his generosity in sharing not only his time, but his uh, what we would be call in our local language as kalakali or the will to share the knowledge. So on behalf of all our listeners, I would like to thank Dr. Sebichan. I would like to uh, request Sri B.S. Ramu to please present a token of her gratitude. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you.